So as you know, uh, Internet of Things is a big competitive field right now. For every association that does any protocols, they want to make sure that they are recognized for Internet of Things. And of course, there's a big competition between Bluetooth and the other one called Zigbee. So we'll talk about Zigbee today. We'll talk about Zigbee's, what are its features, what are different versions, device types, topologies, protocol architecture, applications. And an interesting thing we have, I have put in between is ad hoc networking. Since Zigbee is ad hoc networking, there are protocols for ad hoc routing, which happen to be used in Zigbee, so I'm going to use at least those, AODB and DSL. There are many others, but probably will not get to them in this course. And then Zigbee R4CE and Zigbee Smart. So Zigbee is designed. Zigbee is designed for industrial automation originally. Basically, it was the sensor network protocol. Okay, and this is for those applications which are mostly off. This duty cycle is less than one percent, and such things as remote controls light switches, meter reading, patient monitoring, you know, so on and so forth, right? These are very similar to what we, we had in the Bluetooth, <coughs> except even, I mean, more like Bluetooth is smart because Bluetooth, original Bluetooth was not designed for any of this stuff. Um, ultra low power, low data rate, multi-year battery life, just like Bluetooth is smart. Power management to ensure low power consumption, the rate is not important. It goes up to 250, sorry. The, the, at this point is about the code size. This is very simple. And they claim that their stack is only 32 kilobyte as opposed to 250 kilobyte for Bluetooth. I am not sure that number would be right today because by now they have made it very complex. I mean, every year they add features and so the code becomes complex. This might be an old number. Range goes up to one to hundred meters and goes up to sixty-five thousand nodes. So this is one place where they clearly are different from Bluetooth. Bluetooth remember assigns only three bit numbers and you know six bit numbers. These people assign sixteen bit numbers. So you can have up to two raised to sixteen devices in a single PicoNet. If you want to call it PicoNet, they don't call it PicoNet. So in a single network. You can have 65,000, which is an approximate number for 2016 minus one. Tri band, and since this uses 15.4, it runs everywhere. 15.4 runs, and if you remember from 15.4, 15.4 runs at um, 2.4 gigahertz, 9.15 megahertz, and 868 megahertz. And since those bands are smaller, the rate is smaller in those other bands. Most of the devices run in 2.4. And um, so I'm not going to talk about Mac and Phi in this lecture. We finished that in the previous lecture. If you read a book on Zigbee, half of the book is about 15.4. So we finished that half of the book. Now we are going to talk about Zigbee only in this case. So higher layers. And um, and it says 254 devices are 64,516. <coughs> I think that number should be 15. 2 raised to 16 minus 1. Simpler nodes. Simpler nodes are, we will see in a no, node which can become a leaf, not a full function device, reduced function devices. 254 are the full function devices named after a jig jack dance of the honeybees. So why it is called Jigbee? And this is named after the bees and their dance. What happens is when the bee goes out and finds a nectar someplace, a flower, it comes back to the home and tells everybody, let's go that direction. There is food there. And the way it tells it is by moving around like this, the frequency of movement tells how far it is, and the direction tells where it, which direction it is. So you know that in one mile from here, in the north direction, there is food. And so that is the zigzag, zigbee dance. 
and so it has nothing to do with this with the pro protocol here but somebody liked that and named it zigbee um and and interestingly enough when you read about zigbee there is a lot of competition with bluetooth and so so in one book i was reading they gave a story of a competition there was a king named bluetooth there was some kind of emergency and the bluetooth couldn't do much because it was only one hop and and the zigbee lady a lady in the same town was much smarter and could multi hop and help out the emergency so <laughs> so, so there are all kinds of stories about why it is called zigbee but um, but anyway now we know zigbee if we know the dance all right so we think there is multi hop multi hop means that you can send a message to non adjacent node it can go through people um ad hoc ad hoc means topology is not, topology is not fixed and people are moving are dying are coming in and so on and so forth is very dynamic topology so ad hoc node discover each other mesh and these are three different words so you have to remember the difference between mesh and ad hoc mesh means that the end nodes help route the messages so mesh means that you are not just receiving the messages you are helping others receive the message and that's why the mesh has not succeeded in the real world because if we want to have a mesh in our community i have to take somebody else's signals data and i have to send it to them so either they don't like me or i don't like them and so we want to do it and um, so the mesh is mostly for the military not in anywhere else and and, and other environment where you know each other very well you know you are a part of the same same funding program you know so 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 mesh is the end nodes help route messages for other it's not just the topology here it's what the nodes do ad hoc is about the topology that is very dynamic topology so you cannot have a fixed infrastructure like you know you have in a base station and multi hop is basically because of the mesh thing you know, in some sense okay all right so there are many features in bluetooth some of them are very trivial so i wouldn't put them here but some of them are new and i put them here and they are called pro features so we'll in a minute we will learn that there are many versions of bluetooth the latest version is called bluetooth pro so here are some of the new versions first of all stochastic addressing so how do you get your 16 bit address remember in bluetooth who assigns it anybody remember who assigns the 73 bit address the coordinator. the coordinator here same thing could be done by the coordinator but then there is such a big network so there are only two ways either we divide the addressing among the coordinate among the different routers let's call them right somebody who is in charge of that little piece or we could just randomly select and then make sure that nobody else has it so they selected this one second one first one is also allowed by the way second one is which is new one is that you, the 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 router <coughs> decides a random address picks out a random address and says okay here is your address 16 bit address and then it tells the rest of the network other 65000 nodes that look i have selected this address if somebody else has that address then they will say sorry you you got the wrong name a wrong address and so then this will fill pick out another one link management third second thing is that everybody keeps quality of the links so we know that when i send the packet to him the signal level was minus 53 but when i send it to her it is minus 35 so we know that which one has a better signal and so the links have different cost depending upon the signal level frequency agility so the whole frequency can be changed <coughs> so if somebody <laughs> notices <laughs> that there is interference they tell the coordinator that look i i am noticing a lot of interference on this channel and then the whole network can move to some other channel multicast so we can send a message to multicast one to many routing or many to one routing so this is opposite of multicast is that many sources one destination 
and this is very common in sensor networks because there are many sensors and only one reader and so so you have many to one to concentrator and asymmetric link now it is quite possible that the signal going from me to x is has certain error rate Whereas the coming from X to me has a different error rate. We know why? Because my sensitivity is different, my power is different, his sensitivity is different, power is different. So maybe his sensitivity is very good, so he gets very good signal from me anyway. Whereas my sensitivity is bad, so I get bad signal from him. So the costs are not symmetrical. So they discovered this, and so in some version, actually the latest version, they fixed that asymmetric link. And then they allow fragmentation in the assembly. The previous versions did not. Power management. So generally the routers and the coordinators use the main power and the end devices use batteries. Right? If you are the concentrator who is collecting all the data, probably you are connected to power. And so that is the common thing. Coordinators generally have power all the time, but the end devices use batteries. Security, and now they have added a lot of security stuff in this. There are two levels, at least standard and high level. And the end devices get new security cues, cues when they wake up. So one of the things that you learn in security course is that you never use the same key for more than a few seconds or few minutes. It's just like when they ask you to change your password every six months, the nodes change their key every few minutes. All right, because you don't want to be, if suppose somebody discovered that your keys, somehow, they will be good for a few seconds or a few minutes. Right? So, if you went to sleep and you wake up and you find that you cannot talk to anybody because the key has changed, so that is a mechanism for that too. Alright? So, this is a lot of security stuff. So, now the versions, the JIGB 2004 was the original spec which was designed for home lighting control. It's no longer supported. They updated it in 2006. So that is the last version that is used. Then they updated it in 2007, and then they updated it to Pro. And here is the comparison. <coughs> Pro 2007, which is called the JIGB feature set, and 2006, which is outgoing now. So coordinator can change the channel during operation. This was the frequency agility feature. It was not possible before, but it is possible in these two versions, right? Now you're not going to remember all these, which I don't expect you to remember yes and no, but what I do expect you to remember is this. What are these features? So basically you should know what is frequency agility means. Distributed address assignment, and I will explain more of these later on, but there are two ways to assign the addresses. One is to divide the range, which the old ones could do, but the new one doesn't allow that. Okay? The random address assignment, which the old one could not do, the new one does that. So they switched from distributed assignment to random assignment. Reason is, if the router goes down, the whole range is gone, and you cannot use it, and there's a problem. With this one, this is totally, the routers can go away, the addresses, the nodes remain the same addresses, the, continue, the, the, the communication can continue, and so on. So they found that the stochastic assignment is much better. Group addressing. Everybody allows multicast. Many to one, the previously they did not do that. So they were not really suitable. While they were suitable for turning on the lights, but they were not suitable for sensor networks. Right, so they allow that now. AES 128, you know what that is? Security. So that everybody allows. Trust center. Now that's another thing is that previously this <coughs> security center was the same as the coordinator. The coordinator kept all the keys. And that is problematic because you don't want to give the keys to the coordinator. You may have something which is better than the coordinator, which is logged into a big hall someplace. That is where you keep all the keys. So the trust center is a function which is separated from the coordinator. It can be anywhere. It can be in the coordinator too, but most likely it is in, in a lock and key. It can be any device. Network scale limited by address assignment scheme. You see what was happening, was, and I will show you this. When we do distributed assignment, you have to decide how many routers we are going to ever have, how much level we are going to have. 
So you decide all that before you give the addresses. Because if you are going to have 2,000 routers, you give everybody a small range. If you are going to have two routers, you give them big range. <coughs> so this one is the, because of the distributed assignment, this was limited. Here it is not limited. Fragmentation was not there. It is there now. Commissioning tool is how do you install this thing. Automated thing is all there. So orchestration is all there. Keep link quality. The previous one did not keep the link quality. This one now, you know, goes on the link quality. High security mode is in the latest one. And the topology is this one allows mesh. This one allows trees and mesh it says. But I think there must be some restrictions to this mesh here. Because if it is mesh, then tree is a special case. Right? So I don't understand why they have tree and mesh. They could have just said mesh. But here they say tree and mesh, here they say mesh. So with that, basically, we understand that these are the old ones. And this is the latest one, which is obviously um, the pro. It's probably a little bit higher cost as compared to this standard one. <laughs> Yeah, so the, this is actually called Jigbee feature set. And this is called Jigbee pro feature set. I didn't put the word feature set, but somehow, and this is just Jigbee alone. So this is 2007. Now, there is another problem with Jigbee, which actually, here is the interesting thing. that There are a lot of people who love Jigbee, a lot of people who hate Jigbee. And so the people who hate Jigbee point out that this is not compatible. So the, jet, the aspects are only edge compatible. Edge compatible means you can put anything at the edge, but the core has to be one kind. So for example, Jigbee devices, Jigbee devices means Jigbee 2006 devices can join as N devices in Jigbee Pro Network. If you have Jigbee Pro Network, edge devices, you can put old ones. They cannot come in the middle. They cannot be the router. They cannot be the coordinator. Jigbee Pro devices, same thing. If you have a, some new devices, they cannot be in the middle. They have to be in the core of an old network. If the route, if the coordinator and the routers are old, the new devices have to stay on the edge. You know why? Because they will not know how to give the addresses or how to take the addresses, right? And the Jigbee 2 thing is the same thing for the, you know, 2007 and 2006. So if you are in a different kind, you stay as a leaf, which means reduced function device. So the compatibility is only at the reduced function level, not at the full function level. Yeah. The? Mesh goes away. At the reduced function level, basically, no, no, mesh, you can have mesh. <clears throat> so let me tell you how you have mesh. You see, um, so Jigbee Pro allows a mesh. So you have mesh, but the mesh is like this. You see, mesh has the leaves too. These nodes don't do any routing. Right? So these nodes can be the old ones. But the core has to be mesh. <laughs> okay. Now the device types. Um, the device types are coordinators. We know already. Routers, we know them already. Full function and reduced function. I've just put them here for completeness. We discussed them in the last class. But there are two new devices. Jigbee Trust Center. Question? Jigbee Trust Center. Jigbee Trust Center is a node that keeps all the keys. Now, it doesn't have to be wireless node, by the way. It could be totally wired somewhere else. As long as devices can get to it, that's all it is required, because it, this is a common technology, common thing that is done in, in network security. That is another thing you will learn, is that the, 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 the part which is vulnerable has to be very much protected. They keep it separate. OK? The trust center is a node which keeps all the keys and the passwords. Jigbee gateway is the one that connects to other networks. So generally, it will go from you know sensors to the whole internet. And so the gateway we saw the iPhone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, in the previous case, in the Bluetooth case. Similarly, there is a gateway here which connects you to the 
other networks. <coughs> Topology is here we start topology, you have a concentrator with everything in the edge, you have a tree topology, you have some routers, you have a cluster tree, you have routers and then trees inside the routers, whole thing is still a tree. And then you have a mesh. In mesh, you at least you have one loop here, right? This is not a mesh because there is no loops, but this is a mesh. And this is self-healing. Self-healing in the sense that if some router goes away, the network still continues. Okay? So there are three devices, coordinator, router, and the end device. You see the mesh, in the mesh case, the routers will do the forwarding. So they are meshing, but not the edge devices. <coughs> the protocol architecture, it has basically very similar to the TCP, IP, or, um, or ISO, OSI protocol. So you have Phi and Mac, which came from 802.15, so those are not touched. Then they decide the GDB provides a network layer and with something which goes on the top of the network layer, which is very similar to what you would call transport layer or TCP or whatever, but that's so there is APS, application yeah. support, and then application. Now, in addition to the application, um, they have something called devi GigB device object. So this is something that really helps in the managing the network. And so that lives here on the top of the application support layer. And then the management is actually, this, this layer is managed, this layer is managed, and this layer is secured. So there are security services and the management services on the side as well. Now there is this a GDO public interface, which is GDO is this device, this, uh, this management object. So the applications can, objects can get GDO service through this interface. Anyway, so I'm going to explain this top down, starting from the application, go down to the network layer. I think this we already covered, but I'm going to just go through one more time. Application objects, now you can look at the previous slide and this one. So on the top in the application layer, you have something called application objects. And uh, for example, you might have an application called remote control. That's an application object, okay? And it is called also called the endpoint, EP. And so, for example, if you have a remote control for the light, the switch will have some program that would be first endpoint, and the light will have some program that would be endpoint number six, let's say, just randomly, okay? So the EP1 and EP6 are connected. So there is a connection for these two endpoints. Whenever a message is sent from the switch, something happens to the light, right? So, so that is the that is the endpoint. Going back, these are all endpoints. Okay, on one device you may have many applications, so many endpoints. End node is the end device. So. This whole thing is one end node, right? And these are the end point. These are the, this is the end node. And each node can have to 250 application objects. Then there is a GDO, which is the control and the management of the application object, which initializes the coordinator, security service, service discovery, et cetera, et cetera. Application support layer, this is layered down, which will actually go much more detail in a minute, is the one that helps all the applications, which is like a transport layer. And then there is a network layer, which does the route discovery, neighbor discovery, routing, et cetera, et cetera. And then there is security and GDO management. So this is basically describing the previous figure. Now what we will do is we'll go through layer by layer. So we'll describe the application layer in more detail and, and the other layers in more detail. <coughs> 